Good morning. Welcome to you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of First Lutheran Church, I'm Pastor Mark. It is good to be here with you on this day. A few announcements uh, this week. Uh, don't forget the midweek Lenten services. Uh, they are throughout this uh, season of Lent. Uh, this past week we had the Ash Wednesday service wonderfully attended and a good sermon and great luncheon as well. So all of that, uh, all for $7 for that luncheon, by the way. Soup, uh, two choices of soup and salad and dessert. All of that for $7. It's quite a bargain. So come out and be part of that. Uh, Pardon me? Pie. Oh, and don't forget the pie. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, yeah, can't forget the pie. Oh, yeah, it's pie. <laughs> Plenty of pie. So uh, come on, be part of that. Uh, confirmation class next Sunday. Uh, and yesterday we had the uh, coldest night of the year um, uh, run by the y YWCA, and it was a wonderful opportunity. You've been hearing about that, and uh, 121 walkers, and uh, we're still collecting money for that, uh, and we should go over at least well over $500 that we've collected here um, through First Lutheran Church. So uh, we're, we're really, uh, we're, we did very, very well. So it was a wonderful evening. Yesterday started out bad with snow, and by the end of the day it was great. So a wonderful day uh, for walkers and uh, thank all who supported that wonderful effort. Anything else this morning? Anything else that we need to be aware of? Anything else? If not, welcome again in Christ's name. Please stand for the order for confession and forgiveness found in your bulletin. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, bell choir. Well, bell choir. Thank you. Bell choir. Yes. <laughs>
Please stand for the order for confession and forgiveness found in your bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, our strength, the struggle between good and evil rages within and around us, and the devil and all the forces that defy you tempt us with empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word, and when we fall, raise us again, and restore us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is from the book of Genesis, the second and third chapters, a reading from Genesis. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall die." Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Please join in singing responsively Psalm 121. Shout for 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, all these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of our Lord. may be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, every day we are surrounded by temptation to turn away from you. Give us strength of faith to resist, and when we fail, grant us the forgiveness that comes from Christ Jesus the source of our hope and victory, in whose name we pray. Amen. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. And we are just four days into this Lenten season with 36 to go. Now, if, if, if I were a betting man, if I were a betting man, I'd be betting against myself to make it through the next 36 days without knuckling under to temptation sooner rather than later. I read the scripture for this morning and I asked myself, I asked myself how Jesus survived the assaults of the devil. You see, I'm more like, I, I, for my part, I'm more like the couple in the garden who couldn't go more than an hour or two before they started plucking fruit off the tree. Yeah. Resist temptation. Resist temptation is the familiar message. Wasn't that preached to us since we first started our days in Sunday school? Resist temptation temptation. It began very, very simply it did, as I recall. Follow the rules. Mind your manners. Don't step out of line. 
And along life's way, with every, with every passing year, the rules and regulations became more sophisticated. The rules and regulations became more sophisticated in order to keep pace with the more sophisticated temptations that came our way. Now what do I mean by that? For example, the gentle admonitions that mother gave when I didn't sit up straight and mind my manners, that simple stuff gave way to the stronger words from my grade school teachers who threatened to send me down to the principal's office. And in turn, still stronger words were spoken by the man, I remember this well, strong words spoken by the man at the candy shop who witnessed me not so innocently sneak a piece of bubble gum into my pocket. And when I was 21, the state trooper never hesitated to hand me a $50 ticket for driving too fast on the way to a ball game. He said, I remember, I remember what he looked like. Slow down, slow down, young man. And I recall his words, we want you to grow up to be an old man. You know, since then, I've always sensed he really meant what he said. And I wonder how many other times the Lord spoke to me and I never realized it. Words of wisdom and care, words of corrective admonition, spoken not in meanness, but in honest concern that I might resist temptation, do the right thing, and walk in God's way. The temptations along that way require constant course correction to keep us on the straight and narrow. It's universal. It really is. Lent, Lent, what I mean is not a 40-day season just for the gullible and the weak in spirit. Strong-minded souls and tough characters are also susceptible to the wiles of the devil and his crafty deceptions. Martin Luther, in fact, said, the greater your faith, the more likely you will be attacked by Satan. Yet strangely, some folks imagine that they are immune to temptation and outside of manipulation. They fashion themselves masters of their own destiny, well-educated, sophisticated types, as if they were invulnerable to the temptations faced by, you know, run-of-the-mill mortals like you and I. You know, when the devil sees that, he just loves it. Because those who think they cannot be tempted have already fallen prey to the first and greatest temptation, which is to make ourselves into gods. People who believe they do not need saving at all. And this, my friends, was the problem of the man and the woman in the garden. You see, God plopped them down in the middle of paradise without a care in the world. Just, just tend the garden, he said. Just tend the garden, keep the flower beds weeded, water the plants each day, and take an evening stroll with the Lord. And God would provide the rest. Food, home, great weather, and phenomenal benefit package. Oh, yeah. You know, that's it. That was it. And they blew it. You know, just read scripture. It took less than a day before the Lord told them to get out of here. Resisting temptation fell apart before it ever began. It happened shortly after breakfast on that first day. The man and the woman were tempted by the belief that they could do at least as good a job as the Lord in running the show. And just think, they looked. God was getting all the credit to boot. 
And they even convinced themselves that God was a liar. Yeah. Keep in mind that all of this happened. All of this happened before they ate the fruit. You see, eating the fruit was just a symptom of the deeper sin of believing that they were free to do their own thing and never needed God in the first place. They broke the first and greatest commandment and everything went downhill from there. It always does. It happens so fast. The cause and effect of the temptation was nearly instantaneous. They were so easily snookered. <laughs> yeah. It took a mere second or two to turn them into pawns of the devil, and the devil knew it. Which is why, continuing on with our gospel, which is why the devil tried all of the same old tricks on Jesus. And he figured, why not? Jesus is human after all. So the devil caught up with Jesus out in the wilderness, as the story goes, and he went to work. When Jesus was tired and weak and hungry and thirsty, the devil took full advantage, and, as he always does. Hear Jesus, he said. Hear Jesus. If, if you are the Son of God, Take a few of these stones. If you're hungry, turn them into bread. You see, God won't take care of you. Better do it yourself. Because God can't be trusted. And amazingly, Jesus said no. So the devil went to plan B. He, he took Jesus to the top of the temple to see the spectacular view and said, Pay no mind to the height, Jesus. I know we're way up here, but if you fall, God will take care of you, so don't worry about stepping too close to the edge. It was a simple temptation, but one that we all fall prey to. It goes like this. If God really cares, he will save you. If God really is God, he'd, he'd, he'd cure your cancer, of course. And no wars he would. He'd bring peace on earth and, and world hunger and suffering of any kind. And we'd all live to be 150 years old. So if you are the son of God, Jesus, just step off. Hold God hostage is what it was about. And wait until he gives you what you want. Blackmail God. Make him prove that he is God. And Jesus saw right through it. But the devil had one last trick. Just wave power and glory in front of Jesus, and he would be sure to take the bait. It was the devil's tried and true temptation. It works 99.99% .99 of the time. Just look at all the kingdoms of the world, Jesus. Look at the glory you can have, all the wealth and fame that will go with it, all the people just fawning over you. And Jesus again said no. The devil used all the same tricks with Jesus that he used on the first couple in the garden. And the devil uses all the same tricks on us every single day without fail. You see, I don't know if you noticed, but all temptations fall into those three categories. Care first about yourself. Or try to manipulate God for our own selfish desires. And then blame all the problems on the Lord if you don't get what you want, while you grab for all the glory and power for yourself. See? It's all about you. And the devil knows those three are all he needs to win us over every time. Try as we might to resist. We will fail. And God will send us loving parents and teachers 
Perhaps a man in a candy shop or a wise police officer speaking wise admonitions. And there will be countless others all trying to help us walk the way of the Lord. And we will still fail. The temptations will never cease. And then in our failure, God will use those same rules and commandments and those wise admonitions and all the messengers of grace to point us to the only one who can save us, our Lord, who wandered in the wilderness for our sake so that in the wilderness of our lives, we can know that we are never alone and that the devil cannot take us away from God's love. And that amid all the temptations, Jesus is strong and spreads his arms wide on a cross. And we, though weak and failing to resist, now share in Jesus' victory these 40 days and always. Amen. in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Lord, you alone are God, 
Sustain your church in times of wilderness trials and temptation. Give vision and wisdom to bishops, their staff, and all entrusted with leading your church. Grant strength and courage to all who faithfully guide your people into the future. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You create verdant gardens and expansive deserts. Tend to the needs of every living creature. Bless those who work in fields and orchards, that the world is nourished by the fruits of their labor. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You know our temptations. Grant wisdom to our government leaders. Give them a sense of your justice and righteousness, that equity and peace would come to all regions and nations of the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are a refuge to all in distress. Comfort and protect all refugees and immigrants, especially children who travel alone. In times of trouble, trauma, or illness, surround your people with your steadfast love, especially Ron, Richard, Tom, Cindy, Jill, Keith, Randy, Sandy, Wendy, Sue, Bill, Carol, Debbie, Marianne, Carol Jean, Elizabeth, Clark, Deborah, Mary, Barb, and those we name aloud are in our hearts before you. The people of Ukraine, people of Turkey, people of Palestine, Ohio, people in the West, all travelers and visitors. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You offer abundance to all. Bless our ministry of hospitality and welcome. Care for those who tend to the needs of others, especially worship greeters, coffee hour hosts, and nursery attendants. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You alone are God. We praise you for the faithful departed in every age. Unite our prayers with theirs until our wilderness journey is complete and we rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of our Lord's peace. Truly, God's peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace.
Let your opinions be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim of a blessing. Thank you, Dan. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service. For the sake of your gospel, prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Hosanna, O Hosanna, O Hosanna in the The name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, our living word and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all the 
Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along my pilgrim journey, Lord, I want Jesus. 
stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. Amen. And now may God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Go in peace. Serve in love. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.